It would be no big deal in Palermo, Sicily. But in inner city Baltimore, it's a revelation. People cramming the streets in the central square. Free popcorn, free sodas, free movies. And no one at all making money. Baltimore's Little Italy hasn't seen anything like it for decades. It's just a few blocks long and a few blocks wide, and mostly these days, it's deadly quiet. But once its narrow streets swarmed with raucous Sicilian life. The Catholic Church of St. Leon is its heart. Or it was when Father Rinaldi arrived here in 1939, fresh from his ordination in Rome. It was a thriving community of poor people who mostly had come from Europe and they were trying, striving to make a name for themselves, educate their children so their children would be somebody. And they succeeded. So now it's mostly the old folk who still live in Little Italy. Their sons and daughters have moved to big houses in the suburbs. And as the families moved out, the restaurants moved in. 16 of them and counting. The restaurants began with one or two, and uh, slowly the restaurants grew in number, and the Italians reduced in numbers. But the restaurants depend upon the name of Little Italy. And Little Italy depends upon the restaurants. They depend one on the other, very much so. It has to be that way. But you know how it is with change. Some people love it. Some people wish things would stay the same. There was a dispute over progress here in Little Italy, which had a happy ending after a while. And it all started when Tony Gambino, father and son, wanted to expand the Ciao Bella restaurant. The Gambinos bought the house next door. And that house had a great big wall that faced a parking lot. In other parts of Little Italy, there are murals commissioned by the Restaurant Owners Association. So why not do the same here? We approached a couple artists, and then the one artist that we felt most comfortable with felt that it would be a better idea to build that instead of putting it on the brick. Yeah, and his point was, it'll last a lot longer. We had that built for him and then everything is downhill. The restaurants hadn't reckoned on the opposition of the formidable Ms. Gia Blattimer of the Little Italy Residents Association and with her connections at City Hall. Gotcha. Oh, oh, we got it, Jack. Those connections had helped Ms. Blattimer get the bocce court built at no cost to the residents at all. So she's a respected figure in Little Italy. And as Gia saw it, a mural is one thing, and a billboard the is quite another. Once the owner of that building decided that he wanted more money for the use of that billboard, he could lease it out to anyone. And we could never control what signs went up there. So I um, gathered the residents and I said, this is a no-no. So we went to court, we fought it, and we won. The, the judge agreed that it is a billboard, not a mural. So they had actually been told to take it down. The harmony of Little Italy was rent in two. Residents versus restaurants, comeliness versus commerce. Father Rinaldi was very distressed. I would say uh, it caused a lot of animosity between the two groups. <laughs> Yes. If he offered up some private prayers for divine intercession, Father Rinaldi isn't saying. But somehow, out of a nasty conflict, a lot of happiness has come. Each Friday night, hundreds of people converge on the parking lot beside Chow Bellas. There's music and laughter and good feeling. People who left the neighborhood years ago are back. It's amazing how many people claim to have been the first to think of showing movies on the big white hoarding. But the one who really got the ball rolling was the owner of Damimo's restaurant, 
and president of the Restaurant Owners Association, Marianne Criccio. Here we had this white elephant hanging over us. What were we going to do with it? But the year before, I had gone to Italy to visit my in-laws, and in the piazza in Palermo, Sicily, they were showing films on the wall of the piazza. And, and the piazza was filled with people watching these films. So I immediately phoned uh, Tom Kefarber, and he's the owner of the Senator Movie Theater, and I ran the idea by him. At first, Tom Kefarber wasn't enthused. These things never work out. We get these contacts all the time. There's usually not a booth to project from or a place for the audience to sit. Uh, but we had them up to the theater for a meeting uh, to discuss it with them, basically to, you know, let them down easy. And they presented me with this photograph. And immediately when he sat down and he looked down into the photos, it was almost like a sparkle in his eye. And then he became very interested in it. The first thing that jumps off the photograph is the billboard, which I saw was the perfect, just by eye, I can tell it's a perfect ratio for a 16 millimeter frame. It was extraordinary. And that was an indication that we may be on to something, that we better go down and check this one out. By that afternoon at 2 o'clock, Tom was here in this very parking lot. And uh, the first thing you see, of course, is this beautiful motion picture screen, exact 133 ratio, perfect. A perfect positioning of this parking lot here and the street behind it in order to seat people. And uh, the next challenge became, where do you project from? And the obvious candidate is that window on the third floor of that house right up there. 103 feet from here to there. And uh, fortuitously, we have the right focal length lens to go in our Bauer projector to project a perfect image on the screen. It's a whole series of, of fortuitous coincidences that is just extraordinary. And the luck didn't end there. Because the owner of the house is Mr. John Penty the most amenable man in Little Italy. Mr. John, as everyone calls him, has lived in the neighborhood for all of his 89 years, most of them right here in this house. His two boys have left home, his top bedroom's empty, and he jumped at the chance to make peace in the neighborhood. I ask you one question. Before you go any further, I just want to ask you, is the parties in consent with the whole thing. Everybody has to be together, consent. Otherwise, I don't want it. So Marianne Criccio went back to Gia Blatterman. So she contacted me. She said, how do you think the residents would feel? And I said, now you're talking. Now you're doing something for the whole community. I think it's a great idea. I says, if that's the case, put the projector up there. Yeah. And so Baltimore's Little Italy Summer Film Festival was born. Every week now, for 10 weeks, they've shown movies with an Italian flavor. Every week, the audience has grown, from a couple of hundred the first week to 1,500 tonight. And everybody, it seems, is happy. The movie tonight is Cinema Paradiso. It's a very appropriate film, but if you want to see it, you have to get the video or start your own open-air festival. Here in Baltimore's Little Italy, there isn't a spare seat in the house.